So until that happens, what are your creepiest, spookiest, most inexplicable supernatural slash horrifying life experiences, part two? It was Christmas Day, and I was nine when we drove to my grandparents' house. My grandparents lived in a community which wasn't gated, but still required you to drive through the entrance of the community and then turn right, drive down two blocks of houses, and then turn left to get to their house. We had just turned right when we drove past the house that still had their Halloween decorations up. I pointed this out to my mom, and she told me not to look at that house anymore and to look straight ahead until we arrived at my grandparents' house. Later on, I realized that the Halloween decoration of a life-sized man in a suit hanging by a rope from the tree in the front yard was no decoration. I've told this on here before, but when I was younger, we had our experiences with what we lovingly named Dead Kid. The first time this happened, I was probably around 10 to 12. The night started with me playing a game on my brother's computer up until he fell asleep, which is when I moved to the living room to let him rest. I stayed up late doing a stupid Coca-Cola themed puzzle because I was determined to finish before I went to sleep. I heard my brother talking and got confused. I turned down the TV and heard him saying, I have butt. Do you hear me? I have butt. I started to walk towards his room when I heard him say, whatever, and he stopped talking. I shrugged and headed back to my fancy puzzle. The next morning, he asked me what I was doing the night before. I explained my feat of finishing the puzzle, and he said no. When you were hunched over at my computer, were you asleep? I was trying to get your attention, and you weren't responding. I told him that I was in the other room when I heard him shouting my name. He told me that someone was at his computer desk with a monitor on, staring down at the keyboard. He thought it was especially weird because there was nothing on the monitor, just a blank white screen. We thought it was creepy, but moved on with our lives. That summer, I was in a group with our church's youth group, and we were doing a photo scavenger hunt. We needed to take photos of ourselves in different places, and whoever gathered the photos first won a prize. One of the pictures we needed was to have the group standing together in a bathtub with our clothes on internet. We went to my house since it was closest and on the way in, my mom said hello to all the guys in my group. She was a teacher and knew all of them from school. Nothing strange. That night, my mom asked me who the last boy who went up the stairs was. I listed off the guys in our group. She confirmed she saw all of them, but the last one stuck out because he didn't say hi back to her and wouldn't look at her. I told her that there wasn't anyone else and that she knew everyone there. She kept insisting there was another kid who followed us up and she got a weird feeling from him since he wouldn't acknowledge her. Nope, no additional kid. The next year, I was home alone at night, playing something on my PS2. I thought I heard someone, so I went downstairs to see if anyone got home. No cars were in the driveway, so I just assumed it was one of our cats. I started going back upstairs, and I heard my mom's voice from her room call my name. I froze and didn't go upstairs. She wasn't home. I turned on all the lights and waited for someone else to get home before going back up. Nothing else happened that night. After these events, my brother and I would get these weird feelings, like someone is standing behind you and no one would be there. We'd hear the stairs creaking, but no one would be walking on them. Coming out of sleep, I think I saw a figure in my doorway from time to time. Long story short, I was basically afraid of the dark until I moved from my parents' house. I'm going to give some context before telling what happened to me and my best friend. This happened in Mexico about 15 years ago. Disclaimer, I'm not a native English speaker. I used to live in a gated community where big politicians, very rich people, and a few narcos lived in. I mean, houses that go over the two million US dollar in Mexico. As you can imagine, security in this place was through the roof. Every person that came to meet you had to register its ID, and they would search your car too. They would call your house to know if you wanted them to come through, or you could just send them away before they even came near your house. Security guards have big guns and rifles, and the entrance is bulletproof. Every evening, the guards would patrol and check every house that was in construction to make sure that no worker stayed behind. No house cleaning ladies, unless they actually lived in your house, no one after 6 p.m., only residents. That being said, my best friend and I used to walk all over the place at night to chill out, so our parents wouldn't overhear our conversations. Teenage drama. One night, as we were walking along a sidewalk, I saw a man dressed in typical Mexican garments, white linen pants, and a serape, looking for the entrance of a house to an open window in the second floor. I remember because he was very focused 
and I am nosy and wanted to know what he was looking at. I honestly didn't think that was weird. It was almost midnight, and this man was just outside a house. As we walked near him, I said goodnight to him, but he didn't reply. My friends, seeing this, stomped his feet as to call his attention and echoed my goodnight. Man, did I ever wish he kept his mouth shut. The man, who up to this moment had kept his face away from him, turned around, and that was when we realized this was no man. His eyes were black on the whites, sclera, and deep red colored iris, the same as a person who has been punched in the eyes but without the trauma to the skin. We suddenly felt as if we were going to be dragged down to hell. To say we ran and prayed all the way back to my house is a bit of an understatement. There was no way that this was a man. The clothes don't match the time. The security guards wouldn't have left him stay until midnight. The eyes were filled with fury and dark red and black, and the feeling it was all wrong. So, so wrong. Here's a serious story. I went to Argentina a few years ago to go see my mom's side of the family. I had tons of fun in Argentina, except for when I had to sleep at night. The guest's room was right next to the storage room, which had this strange, creepy doll that my mom got as a kid. I knew something was off about it. Fast forward to about 2.30 a.m., and I hear this loud thump in the storage room. Another thump follows. This threw me and my mom awake, and we went to see what was going on. The doll somehow got out of the chair and hit the door. I couldn't sleep for the rest of the night. One I don't think I've told before. My aunt and cousins lived in an old house that had belonged to their great aunt or something. She died in the back upstairs bedroom, which was my aunt's bedroom. My cousin shared the big front bedroom, no one used the spare room, and the only other room was the bathroom. One night, when the cousin my age was around three, he was caught up way past his bedtime in my aunt's room, chatting away to someone who must have been sitting in the old rocking chair. He ended up describing the great aunt perfectly, freaked my aunt out. This was a story that was told a lot to me growing up, along with the farmhouse they had lived in that had been haunted when I was around six, maybe seven. My cousins and I would go ghost hunting in their house. We'd have these little torches. We'd get ourselves all worked up and go upstairs in the pitch black. Well, one night, we'd do this again, sneaking up the stairs when we heard this massive rumble and a bang come from their bedroom. It scared the crap out of us. Me and my slightly younger cousin stayed put, but we were scared. The one of my age screamed and ran back downstairs. We make it up the stairs, got to the light and turned it on. For some reason, the board on the back of their wardrobe had taken that moment to fall out of the back. Freaking hilarious. We found my other cousin hiding behind the back of the couch, terrified. Oh, I've told this before, but it's perfect and the thread is young, so... Small apartment, new wife, first kid. In order to get into the kitchen from the living room, you had to slalom past the couch, a computer desk, and into the doorway. For an adult, this is fine. For a child who was just learning to run, and a computer desk that was at the perfect make sure your kid eats crayons and can only count to spaghetti height, it was a nightmare. I was tired, positioned on one end of the couch and trying to watch TV. I had worked a million hours at the factory and just wanted some peace. Zoom. My daughter runs by me at, I can't wait to wear a helmet speeds, and I catch her before she bonks off the desk. I tell her to stop running to the kitchen and go back to dazing in front of the TV. Zoom. She tries it again, giggling, thinking now it is a game. I'm tired, I'm cranky, and now I'm trying to keep a kid from making sure her only college choice is burger, while my wife watches TV on the other end of the couch. I turn her around, yell at her more sternly, and repeat this game about three more times. Then, half asleep, I watch in horror as the little blonde head zooms past me and into the kitchen. I lose my shit. I jump up yelling and stomp into the kitchen just in time to see the cupboard under the sink close. What in the hell are you doing? I yell. What? What in the hell was that? My wife asks behind me, wide-eyed and pale, my young daughter mostly asleep in her arms. We never, ever looked and moved soon after. My family lived in a very haunted house growing up. Most of the time, whatever was there just wanted to make you run. They never touched you or caused harm. My siblings and even family friends can name each weird thing in every room. Multiple people would see or interact with the same odd things in the same places. But then, there was Shadow Dad, as we called him. My brother saw him first. He was going to the restroom in the middle of the night, and when he came out to go down the hall to his room, from behind he heard something running for him. He took off, sprinting into the room, 
and bolting up the ladder of his high bunk bed. The thing grabbed his ankle and tried to yank him down. My brother, screaming bloody murder, kicked and flailed, but made it up. Looking back down, he saw my dad, but pitch black. His arms were a little longer, and his hands looked wrong. Then, Shadow Dad walked away. My little sister was, as we joke, a demon as a kid. At four years old, she was not afraid of the dark, of being alone, or of going into the basement. She would regularly disappear for hours, and when asked where she went, she would reply that she was playing with her friends in the basement. They only come out when the lights are off. Horrifying, right? She was the kid who would walk to get water at midnight without turning on lights or even running up the stairs. She would say terrifying things about her friends in the basement, like the long horse lady. But one day, she wouldn't go anywhere alone. She had to turn on every light. She wouldn't go to sleep without someone with her. She would cry when she needed something at night. When we asked her what happened, all she would say was, Shadow Dad got me. I asked her a few weeks ago if she remembered, and she told me she remembered loving her friends, and then one day, being afraid. She remembered Shadow Dad chasing her. She thinks he got her, but she doesn't have a clear memory. Whatever Shadow Dad did, or whatever happened, it changed her forever. I don't believe in ghosts, but I swear I grew up in a haunted house. It was a 1950s rambler, of all things. We know that the people that built the place had a mentally disabled son who died in the house in his 40s, but he was somewhere around third grade mentally, basically a child. We also know that the house was on the market a long time before my parents bought it. I've been told, but haven't confirmed, that when it finally sold, the family that moved in lived there less than a year and then moved out and put the house on the market for a steal. My parents snapped it up and lived there for close to 30 years. Growing up in the house, it was like the shadows were always moving. Some of them were aggressive, some of them were not, but one shadow showed up time and time again. A shadow of what seemed to me at the time a rather large man. He wasn't that tall, maybe five foot eight, but he was thick. I'm a big comic book fan, and he reminded me of a disheveled kingpin. That shadow was a troublemaker. He would stand outside of the bathroom door and lunge at you as you exited. If you were transporting a hot pan from the stove to the sink, or from the oven to the dining room, he would lunge at you like he was going to knock the pan out of your hands. In the yard, he would hide around a mimosa tree and lunge at you while you were mowing the yard. One time, I was so startled, I jumped off the riding mower and tripped. The mower had a butt sensor and stopped immediately, thank goodness. After that, I mowed the area with a push mower. He would spook me in the shower and at night when I was trying to sleep, and if I was home alone watching television, the works. In this house, we had a game room that was nicely converted garage. My sister was scared of that room and wouldn't go in there at night without anyone with her. Strange stuff happened in that room. The lights would turn on for no reason, the television in there would turn on. There were two closets in there, both with double bifold doors. The doors would fling open and stuff would hurl out of the closet. The door to the game room was oriented so that you could see from the doorway into the sitting room of the living room, where we mostly watched TV. We usually kept this door completely shut, but sometimes we would hear jiggling on the doorknob and the door would open just a sliver, like someone was watching us in the other room. One time, my sister brought home her boyfriend from college and he slept on the couch in the living room. He said in the middle of the night he heard the door to the game room open, stuff being moved around in the dark, and the light to the game room come on. He sat up in a panic just in time to see a chair move and one of the closet doors open on its own. A couple of piles of sewing fabric get thrown on the floor. My mother has been a lifelong fabric collector. She used to be a pretty good seamstress. The guy was scared half to death, refused to sleep in the house again, and broke up with my sister soon after. We all got an uneasy chuckle out of the whole thing. That was over 15 years ago, probably closer to 20 years now. My sisters and I have grown up and now with our own kids, and we all live a long way from that house. I barely think about the stuff I saw growing up there. A few years ago though, my sister was visiting our parents, who only moved out of the house recently, with her son and two daughters, and her oldest daughter suddenly stared at my sister asked her what was wrong, and she said, Mommy, why does that man like to scare me? What man, honey? The man who likes to stand outside the bathroom door. All right, all right, late to the party will probably be buried, and it's not much of a story compared to some of the others in this thread. My mom and I had a pretty complicated relationship, with her being a neglectful alcoholic who basically kicked me out of the house when I was 17. My dad was abusive too, and she wasn't able to protect my siblings and me from him either. He was abusive towards her too. Anyway, 
She died rather suddenly of cirrhosis of the liver after I had spent probably 10 years trying to help her get sober, counseling, AA, Al-Anon, etc. It was sad because on her deathbed, I knew she was dying, but she did not know. She told me that now she understood why I did what I did to help her get sober and that after she got out of the hospital, everything would be better. I just said, sure, mom, I know, not telling her that she was never going to leave that hospital alive. I figured, what was the point of making her feel worse than she already did? I let her have that hope. Anyway, probably 20 years later, I was working in my home office. It was the first thing in the morning, and I have the habit of taking notes in a composition book, and I always make sure the first thing I do is put the date at the top of the page. Well, what do you know? It's her birthday. So next to the date, I write, Happy birthday, Mom, and just sat there, sort of pensively, thinking about how sad it was that she never got to see her grandkids and wondering if there was anything else I could have done to stop her from self-destructing. I hadn't turned my computer on, hadn't printed anything out, nothing but date my notebook page and write her little happy birthday note. Suddenly, the printer just springs to life. I hadn't sent anything to it. One page prints out. On top of the left-hand corner of the page is one heart. It must have been printed from one of those wingding fonts that makes all the symbols. I had never had a feeling of closeness to my mom after she died or felt that she was still around. But that one heart on the page right after I wrote her the happy birthday note just seemed like more than just a coincidence. Anyway, I choose to believe it was her telling me that she was okay and that she loved me, something she never said when she was alive. And that's my one and only ghost story. And maybe it's just a rogue printer story was driving near Peggy's Cove one night around 2 a.m. with the oldest brother. It's pretty isolated there, very few houses or people in the area. Drive by this young man hitchhiking. He's got a huge duffel bag, walking with a bit of a limp. We drive by him and immediately start saying we should turn around to get him because it's so late. He's probably pretty sore. Who knows where he's even walking from? So we turn around and drive back to get him. We pass no other cars and there's absolutely no one on the road. We drive by where we saw him, no one there. We drive another two to three kilometers past that, and no one there. We turn ourselves back around and drive by again, still looking for this guy. Absolutely nowhere to be found. I still get shivers when I think about that night. There's no reasonable explanation for where that guy could have disappeared to in such a short window of time in the middle of nowhere. I used to live in Okinawa, Japan as a kid, which is an incredibly haunted place. Well. One day my mother and I took me and my friend to this one park that had this huge stone slide on the side of the hill. We were the only ones at the park at the time, so me and my friend were just being goofy and playing around. Then we decided to play hide and seek. I volunteered to be the seeker and started to count. I reached 20 and spun around to see if I could spot him really quick, and sure enough, I saw him at the area at the top of the slide. I made my way over and tried to be stealthy as I climbed, so as not to alert him I was coming. I reached the top, screaming, I found you, but nobody was there. And he definitely hadn't gone down the slide, as I would have seen him do so. It was then I saw him at the other side of the park, and I was confused as to what had just happened. I was overcome by the off feeling because I knew I saw something up there, and there was nobody else around here. I slid down the slide and caught him, and asked him if he ever was hiding at the top of the slide, to which he replied no. We played for a bit more before it was time to go but I never went back up to the top of that slide. This happened years ago when I was still in high school. During summer break, I would be in the house alone while my parents were at work. I was sitting in the family room watching TV when I started hearing an electronic tone coming from behind me from where my room would be. I mute the TV and go to my room to investigate and I hear the sound is coming from my cupboard under my TV. I open it up and a handheld racing game was turned on and I was hearing the sound of the device. I turned it off, thinking it's kind of weird that it turned itself on when I start hearing static coming from the family room. I go back into the family room and notice that the old sound system was turned on. The sound system could play cassette tapes, CDs, vinyl records, and radio. In order to turn it on, you had to press a button that would stay pressed in and would turn off when you press the button again, releasing it and allowing it to pop out. The sound system button was fully pressed in and I hadn't turned it on. I walk up to the sound system and turn it off. Right after that, 
I turn it off, I hear what sounds like little kids running and giggling down the hallway behind me. Since this was starting to look like the opening scene in a horror movie, and there was no way I was going to go back to my room to investigate by myself, I decided to call some friends over so we could play video games. Nothing like that had ever happened before or since. I'm not sure what caused it, but it certainly freaked me out. I live deep in the mountains. I'm talking a 45 minute drive to the nearest small town. We are nearly completely isolated and surrounded on all sides by thousands of acres of national forest. It is the real deal to live there and not uncommon for large predators to roam through our property, grizzlies, lions, wolves, etc. To help combat this, my wife and I have several large shepherd dogs that roam the property. They do an excellent job rerouting wildlife around the property, marking and just being a good survival companions. If something goes bump in the night, either the dogs freak out or they don't. After a while, you learn to interpret their barking and growling from bat shit panic when a bear is outside to annoyed I'm trying to sleep yapping when a raccoon gets in the trash. Still, you never get fully used to them barking in the night. There's always a what if in the back of your head. Well, I let them inside to eat at night or when it's too cold to be outside. One December evening, my wife and I had them in and we were watching Planet Earth. No big deal. We're all a big happy family gathered around the TV. My shepherds love to watch the television, see all the cool animals. We had watched several episodes and they never made a peep when they saw sharks, elephants, komodos, hyenas, blah blah. Then came the mountain episode and they were on high alert but still calm until they cut to a night vision scene of a mountain lion stalking in the dark. They all lost it, nearly knocked over the TV trying to attack it. Our youngest pup, still 80 pounds, jumped on our laps and was visibly shaking and full tilt barking and growling. It was unnerving to say the least. We get lions around here, but to see how keen the dogs were on just a clip of one really demonstrated not only the fact that they were intimately familiar with the threat, but that they instinctively knew what one looked like prowling in the night. It was an inherent threat, and they not only knew it, but were scared to death of it. We had watched hundreds of hours of shows with them and never once got that reaction before. Alright, thanks for sticking with me this far. Here's the shit your pants scary part of the story. I really don't even like writing it because the whole thing still freaks us out to this day. We are again all inside on a cold winter night. My wife and I plop down to watch some TV and the dogs gather around intently. I decide to throw on a stupid alien documentary my friend recommends. The dogs watch closely but seem normal. Then the documentary shows some supposed pics of graylings lurking in the night. The dogs fucking lose it. Worse than the mountain lions. Holy shit. We have to turn the TV off to stop the dogs from destroying the house. And even then, they are all super freaked out. Tucked tails whimpering the works. Again, we watch TV with them all the fucking time. And nothing has ever got them riled up, let alone full panic except for these two instances. After we calmed the dogs down, my wife and I sat in silence for a long while as the horror slowly washed over us that what if, when you hear the dogs freaking out in the middle of the night, apparently could be aliens. Not fucking cool. TL, doctor, my dogs told me there are aliens wandering our property at night. <laughs>